Hello, Medford community. I'm Brett Champion, the proud superintendent of schools here in the Medford School District. And welcome to Medford Anywhere Learning TV. We are so grateful to our partners who helped us bring Medford Anywhere Learning TV to life. And those include Southern Oregon PBS, KTVL, KDRV, and The Dove TV. Special shout out to Southern Oregon PBS for also producing these parts. In the Medford School District, we believe that all are learning, and learning is for all. And what better venue to share our learning than Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Welcome. Hello, I'm Kristen Robinson, and today we are going to be working on a lesson that is appropriate for kindergarten through second grade. In this lesson, we are going to explore informational text and research through charts like this that are what we know, what we wonder, and things we've learned. This is also a hands-on hands project, um, so we're going to do a craftivity at the end that looks a lot like this. A little disclaimer, do not take your toilet paper off your rules to do this craft. Only use rules that you have available. So let's get started talking about our standard. Our standard is that we can, with guidance, so that would be mom, dad, our grandparents, whoever is taking care of us, can support us and help us recall information. So that's things that we know, things that we're going to wonder about, and things we're learning. And we're going to gather that information from experiences we've already had and experiences we're going to have today. So let's get started on our wonderful No Wonder Learn chart about ladybugs. So I wrote a ladybug poem. I think one of the best things to do when you're trying to gather information and figure out what you already know is to write it down. And if you can add a little bit of creativity in there with it, it makes it that much more fun. So I know this. As the sun shines bright and the flowers bloom, I can't help but be excited that I might see a ladybug soon. Here is what I know. They put on quite a show as they flutter in the sky. With their black spots and hard shells, they are tiny little creatures made up of both boys and girls. So let's talk about what we know. As you can see, I have a chart, but if you didn't have a chart at home, you could use things like index cards, and you could write no at the top of them, and then things you know on the cards, or you could even just use a plain piece of paper with no wonder learned on it. So we'll put this aside for right now and talk about our chart. So the first thing we know is that ladybugs have black spots, and I wrote my I knows on post-its because they stick really well to my poster paper. So I'm going to put my I know ladybugs have black spots under my no column. I also know from my poem and from seeing ladybugs in the world that they have hard shells. We really wouldn't want to touch a ladybug shell, but sometimes when they're crawling in our hands, we can see that they're not soft and malleable. They're nice and hard and shiny. I know that they're tiny. I've never seen a huge ladybug. So I'm going to pop that up there. So, so far for I know, I know that ladybugs have spots. I know they have hard shells. And I know that they're tiny. I also know that they are boys and girls. Even though they're called ladybugs, they're not just ladies. And then we talked about that ladybugs fly through the sky. So I'm going to put my I know ladybugs fly through the sky under my no column. And really, this is just helping me remember things that I've learned about ladybugs. And putting I know that they play dead so no one can see. <gasps> Did you know that? Sometimes they play dead so nobody can see them. So let's read the rest of I knows. So if I see a ladybug, that's lucky to me. Did you know that it's considered lucky to see a ladybug? Hmm, we're gonna pop that right here. So what I have under my no column so far is I know ladybugs have black spots. I know they have hard shells. I know that they're tiny. 
I know that ladybugs are not just female, but they're male and female. I know they can fly through the sky because they have wings. And I know they play dead, so no one will see them sometimes. And I know that they're good luck. So now I'm to the part where I'm kind of wondering things that I don't know about ladybugs, or maybe things I think I might know, but I'm still curious about. So let's keep reading. I can't help but wonder how many legs they have. Hmm. I don't think I've ever counted the legs on a ladybug. Why are they so lucky? Why aren't they bad? Sometimes we think bugs are bad. What kind of insect, insect might they be? Do they all have spots? Do they live in a tree? What do they eat? Where do they sleep? Do they have moms and dads? Are they all red and black? These are questions that I ask. So I have a few questions to post in my wonder column because this is my column where I'm questioning. I'm wondering about things I don't necessarily know, but a wonder can also be something I think I kind of know, but I want a solid answer to. So again, I put all of my wonders on post-its so I could easily put them on my chart. But remember, you could be writing these down on a piece of paper as you go. So I'm going to put, I wonder how many legs they have. I've always wondered that. Because I've always secretly wanted to turn a ladybug over and count its legs, but they don't sit still long enough. And I wonder, why are ladybugs lucky? My whole life, people say, oh, you're so lucky. A ladybug flew by. Why are they lucky? And I wonder what kind of insect they are. Hmm, I've never heard of the ladybug family, so I wonder what family they live in. We're going to put that under my wonder. This is what I'm wondering. And I wonder if all ladybugs have spots. Hmm. And kind of a side wonder is if they don't all have spots, does that still make them a ladybug? Where do they live? Do they live outside or inside? Think about that. And I wonder, what do ladybugs eat? I've never seen a ladybug go to the store. So we're going to pop that on there. I wonder what they eat. And remember, we're going to go over all these one more time so we have all of our wonders. Oh, and a really important question, are they all red and black? I know my favorite ones are red and black. Okay, so let's talk about our wonders. We have, I wonder how many legs they have. I wonder why are ladybugs lucky? And I wonder what kind of insect a ladybug is. Do they all have spots? Where do they live? I wonder what they eat, because we know, like we said, they don't go to the grocery store. And are they all red and black? That's what I wonder. So now it's time for the learning part. And this is the part that you can either go off of what I'm talking about today, or if you feel really adventurous and you have the ability, you could look online, you could look into a book, you could ask your friends, you could ask your family. But here's what I have so far. This is what I've learned. Would it shock you to know that ladybugs have six legs? I didn't know that. They are good luck because they eat bad bugs that eat plants in our garden and they lay nasty eggs that didn't eat our roses and we don't like that. Ugh. They are beetles. That's what kind of bugs they are. So they also sometimes have spots and sometimes they don't. They are still a ladybug if they don't have spots. They live in trees. They live in shrubs and bushes and plants. They don't love to be indoors. But you might see one inside by chance. Hmm, I wonder if they accidentally fly inside when the door's open or the window. Let's see what else we know. We have learned that they eat bugs. And as we said before, they drink water. They sleep when it's cold, just like a bear. They wait until spring is in the air. So we call that hibernating. They actually don't leave their homes until it's 60 degrees outside. So if you see a ladybug before it's 60 degrees, you're probably not seeing a ladybug. 
with 400 different types of ladybugs, their colors are mighty. Orange is often the color you will see. Red and black are a favorite, but don't be surprised if you see a yellow little friend in a tree. I had no idea that ladybugs came in so many different colors. We showed today what we know and we wondered with might and in the end, we learned that ladybugs are truly more than an amazing sight. So let's put what we've learned on our chart about our little friends. So ladybugs have six legs. We learned that, remember, we asked the question, I wonder how many legs they have, and they is the ladybug. The ladybugs have six legs. I bet they can move around really fast with that many legs. And then we asked, I wonder why ladybugs are lucky. That is something that I really didn't know. In our answer, ladybugs are good luck because they eat other bugs in our garden that eat our plants, and we don't want bugs to eat our plants. And then we asked, what family of insects do the ladybugs live in? And did you know they were beetles before this? I didn't know that. Ladybugs are part of the beetle family. So see what's really cool is a teacher can learn right alongside of you. And then we said, I wonder if all ladybugs have spots. Hmm. We learned something new on that one too. We learned that some ladybugs have no spots at all. So they would just be a beautiful colored ladybug. And did you also know when Mrs. Robinson was reading, she found out that most that don't have spots are either orange or yellow. And ladybugs, we know they live outside for the most part, but they love to live in shrubs and trees they love your gardens, but remember, they're good creatures to have in our gardens. So if we see one, we want to leave them there or her there because they're taking care of our plants for us. We also asked, what do they eat? We've covered that one at great extent. They eat those icky bugs we don't like, and they drink water. I bet they really like it when there's a nice little drizzle outside because then there's extra water on the ground for them. And then we said, are they all black and red? There's over 400 different types of ladybugs. Holy cow, that's a lot of ladybugs. Most are orange, some are red and black, and some, as we talked about, are yellow. And we know that they stay in hibernation until it's at least 60 degrees outside. So if you see a ladybug that has lost their family or is outside, you could actually put the ladybug, are you ready for this, in your refrigerator and keep him cool until it's 60 degrees outside. So now that we've talked about what we know, what we've wondered, and what we've learned, we're just going to talk a little bit more about how you could do this at home. What other topics? Because you could do this with seasons. You could do this with food. You could do this with your favorite book. It's really endless, the things that you know, wonder, and learn. If you have construction paper at home, you can make your own little titles, and you can put them down on a piece of paper, what I know, what I wonder, and what I learned. And you could also change wonder to, I'm wondering about, or I have questions about. You could also use your index cards, and remember parents, if you're using this as a writing assignment, our youngest learners can have you write it and you can have them trace over those letters that will help with their letter formation. So now that we've done this fun part, we're gonna move on to the craftivity that it will be hands-on, it helps develop those fine motor skills, and it engages the brain in a little bit of creativity. It is now time to move on to probably my favorite part. The knowledge is cool, but the craftivity is super fun. So, what you will need is a toilet paper roll. Again, please don't take the toilet paper off of the rolls you have in your house to do this. Wait till you have some empties. Or you can use a paper towel roll that you cut in half. Or, if you don't have either of those, you could just use a piece of construction paper, or this could even be white paper that you color in, and you roll it up into a cylinder shape. 
The best way to attach this, if you are doing just a piece of paper, is to put a couple pieces of tape down, or you can glue the inside and tape it. And then I like to use clothespins to hold it until it dries. So you can see, I went ahead and covered a toilet paper roll. Um, and this is what it will look like after it's covered. Just to give you an idea of how I start out, I cut the strip of paper. And I like to tape it down just because it gives me a nice, secure um, place to start. And then I roll this around. And then you can either use a glue stick or just white glue and just apply some glue on the end. And you could also put this on the roll too because glue really likes to stick to glue. And then you're going to roll it around. And we are going to borrow the clothespins off of my roll that's already dry, just so you can kind of see how I pop that on there, like so. And clothespins are handy um, if you have a rubber band. You could use a rubber band. If you have binder clips, you could use binder clips. And if you have paper clips, you could use paper clips. And if all else fails, you could use string. So we're going to let this dry. I wouldn't want to really do much more with this until it dries. And Usually if you're using school glue, it's about 20 minutes. So you can set this aside and start working on the other elements of your ladybug. And you can see on my ladybug, not only do I have the paper roll um, covered with the black paper, but I've cut out a circle, which is a super opportunity to talk about shapes with your child. And then I have some polka dots, um, which I actually punched, but we'll talk about different ways you can do that. And the eyes, again, circles, so there's lots of shape talk that can happen here. And then I used a pipe cleaner, however, um, you can cut out from black paper or red paper little antennas for your ladybug. So let's talk about making the wings for our cutie. So I just took a jar and traced it onto a piece of red paper um, and then cut it out. And this is the fun part, is you get to talk about making one shape into two shapes. So with a pair of scissors, obviously you'd want these to be child safe if your child is doing this. Cut it in half and again, opportunity to talk about, I had a whole piece, now I have two pieces. Is it still the same amount or do I have more pieces? After you create your wings, you can have your child punch out shapes um, with a hole punch if you have a hole punch. I just simply used a black piece of paper. You can see this one's been well used. And I cut out or punched out my little dots. And remember, ladybugs can have up to 20 polka dots on their body or none at all. So this is really an option for you at this point. After you punch those out, if you have a puncher like mine, you have to open it up and just dump those little punches out onto your workspace. If you don't have a hole punch, you can obviously color these in with a marker like I did. I just took a plain back black marker and colored the polka dots on. Again, excellent opportunity to talk about how many are you putting on that wing. Do you think all ladybugs have the same amount of dots on one side as the other? And then, with a little bit of glue, you can glue the little polka dots onto the wings. I put three on each side. Um, so I was thinking as I did this, I would have a conversation with my kiddos saying, okay, I have three on this side and three on this side. Ooh, three and three makes what? How many polka dots does my ladybug, ladybug have total? So we're going to push these little dots aside and the wings that I'm working on and use my completed wings that I have here, which I have two wings and three dots on each side. This is the part that is excellent for fine motor development. You have your kiddo take the dots and with the glue, just have them put a little drop on the back of that dot and then have them pick it up and glue it on. That way they are engaged the whole time, they're creating their ladybug wings and they're using those motor skills that we really need to develop, develop in our smaller kids. All right, now for assembling my ladybug. So my ladybug's little body is all done. And this is the one I just glued. So we're gonna use the one that's been sitting for a while and is nice and glued together. I am going to glue my wings to the front. 
this again, little bit of glue, school glue or glue stick. You could also tape them on if you didn't have glue handy. I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue onto the back of my ladybug wing. I have to take my glue off the top that's dried on here. This is well-loved glue. And you just put a little bit right on the outside if it will come out. There we go. You have to love school glue. And then I popped one on there like that. Oop, my little dot's coming down. We'll just fix that. I think it's always really good to see real life things that happen because then you know you're not alone if something happens at home. And then on this wing, we're going to do the same thing. And I might even hold this little wing in place with my clothespin. Clothespins are my new favorite thing to use besides my fingers. A little bit of glue on the edge. And then we'll put that other wing just beside it. And if need be, you could hold those two together, I think, with one clip and still move it around. So there you go. You have your wings on there and we're holding them together with the clip. And then to finish your ladybug, you are going to either punch out or paint on little white dots, an eraser on the back of a pencil in white paint. Super easy way to make polka dots. And then I punched out some more black dots, so two more black dots. And that's, again, a really good time to say, how many dots do you need to punch out for the eyeballs? Ooh, two. You could even ask, how many punches have we done so far all together? Glue the black eyeballs onto the white of the eye. And then you're going to want to let this sit for just a little bit until that glue dries. Otherwise, everything's going to slide off of your ladybug. Once that has dried, I would say at least 20 minutes if you're using white glue. Glue stick, you're going to have a little more flexibility because it dries within 5-10 minutes. You are going to cut out, if you have one, a pipe cleaner. And I would suggest parents, you do this instead of having your kiddos do this. I just fold my pipe cleaner in half and I cut it either with sharp scissors or if you have um, wire cutters. And then I fold it in half again. Again, a great opportunity to talk about parts and pieces. And you could make them long, you can make them short. Just bend those little antenna a little bit at the top. And then you can either tape these to the inside or glue them. If you glue them, you're going to want to use something to hold them in place. Or you could have your mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, somebody who's helping you at home, glue them with a hot glue gun. But please, kiddos, do not use a hot glue gun on your own. Once it's all dried, you have your ladybug, and you could actually take your ladybug and walk over to your chart and go over what you know, what you wondered, and what you learned, and compare it to the ladybug that you've made. If you wanted to take it one step further, you could probably even make some little legs to go off on the sides. But keep it fun, because it's a craftivity, and it's meant to help you learn something wonderful about our world. Some other ideas, since it is that wonderful season of spring, you could make a tulip. Um, the tulip is really similar to the ladybug in that it's a toilet paper roll that's covered with green paper. I just cut some leaf shapes out freehand and then made a little grass fringe, which we all love. And you just do that by taking a pair of scissors and cutting into a strip of green. I think the best part about these types of projects is if you don't have green construction paper at home, if you have crayons and you have markers, you could make your own green paper and actually it makes it even more personal when you do that. And then after you make your little fringe, you just glue it on the bottom of your toilet paper roll and bend those little pieces out and you have grass. The possibilities are really endless when you look around your world. You can pull anything and make it a learning experience. I hope you had a lot of fun creating with me today, and I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for joining us today on Medford Anywhere Learning TV for the latest updates on what's going on in the Medford School District, including COVID-19 updates, as well as next steps for Medford Anywhere Learning, because there's always more still to come. Check out our website at www.medford.k12.or.us. See you soon.
it's a big enough district so you get all the support that you need from the different staff, from the coaches, from the administration. Uh, but at the same time, it has a sense of uh, family. We all know each other. Uh, it's a small community in that sense. The environment at South Medford is one of the most positive uh, environments that I've ever been in. You walk down the hall and you talk to your peers and you feel supported and you feel loved. It's a community-oriented place, not just teachers, but the community is involved in the education of children. And I believe that in this district, we work very, very hard together for a common goal to make sure that all children are succeeding at all levels and all diversity. And we try to incorporate as many things as we can and work together to make sure that children are going to succeed. My name is Gloria Pareto Robertson, and I'm the Oregon State Teacher of the Year for the year 2017. I teach kindergarten at Howard Elementary. The reason why I love teaching in Medford is that especially here at Howard Elementary, we have such a diverse population. This year in my class, I have students that are Filipino and they speak Tagalog, and then I have some students that speak Spanish and they come from all different parts of South America. Our students really need role models. For our kids to see, hey, you know, that person looks like me. They even speak like me at times, or um, being able to connect to the, to the parents in that way, that it's absolutely critical that our kids see their faces in the role models that are looking at every day. One of my former students, she is now in community college. She was in my kindergarten class 13 years ago. She says, you have been my, fir my first and for the longest time um, the only Mexican teacher I've had. And the fact that my mother can communicate with you and the other parents were able to communicate with you and, and see that school is a wonderful place to be and that it's a safe place to be and that we can learn just as well as everyone else. And so she wanted to come back and think about her, her teaching career here back where she started originally. Three questions. My name is Ryan King. Uh, this is my fourth year at Rouge Community School. Being in a rural setting, K through eight, working with a small community, it really allows me to plug in and really investigate what's out there as far as talents go, in the community as far as what we can do. The field trips are plenty. We always go out into the environment and do service learning projects. And what's great is this Pathways program that Medford has installed at the high school level. Working in a middle school, I can prepare them for that journey now. To spell by stretching I'm Isaiah out. Ganaway, and I teach kindergarten, and I, this is my first year. I love it. I'm having a great time. It's a lot, a lot of learning, but that's part of, part of the fun of it, too. The other kindergarten teachers uh, took me in, let me be a part of the team, let me have input, which was, was fantastic for somebody who doesn't have experience and they, they listened to me and were, let me be a part of the team. One of the best ways uh, for teachers to be successful is when the students experience success. And, you know, all the professional development that we do outside of the building is really important for us to sharpen that saw. But at the same time, the best professional development takes place inside the building. And when teachers collaborate with each other, that is just, um, we get so much out of those experiences. The support and that you get from administration and from the other teachers is different than um, in all places. So you really want to check out the school and the school district that you're going to. I had a 10-year career on the East Coast, and when I made this move, I made it deliberately. I knew what I wanted, I knew what I was looking for, and South Memphis had it. My greatest joy uh, for teaching music is opening the doors for children and watching them go through it and this, the smiles and the joy that they have on their faces when they succeed with something they had no idea that they were capable of. One of the greatest things that I hear from students is that they feel that South Medford is a safe and happy place. They're excited to be here, they want to be here, they're excited to see what you have in store for them that day and if you ever have a question you just ask your neighbor and they're there for you. The excitement when a student gets something that they've been working hard on is irreplaceable. And so I came to, to Howard and I was so happy, all the wonderful families that were here. You know, I lived in a, in a big city for five years and it was fun, uh, but there was also a bit of a sense of isolation and here you don't have that. It's really easy to find your place and it's really easy to connect um, and really easy to be able to be a, a part of something.